AI controlled <laughs> opponent. You know, they've done, they've done amazing things with it. So this is a big, it's a big task for Ethereal, but you know, we've seen some pretty good games from today. Can, yeah, can they do really, it? I'm really not sure. I, I think a lot of it will come down to the drop. We were talking about it before. Is Although you do have to be able to play out the game and be very adept at playing out your compositions, a lot can really be said uh, for the for just how impactful the draft can be in this game. We even saw in the midseason brawl there were some games which were pretty much 100% done by the draft. It was just yeah. essentially just a matter of playing it out. And look how careful Ethereal is being right now. Like they know New Rec is a is always a good ban. But this is a good ban against Nomia. And look, they're actually going to pick something that's uh, bannable, that has historically yeah. been good on the map. No, they've switched back to the new wreck. I was about to say, you know, I was going to be a bit clear. Like, you know, yeah. Gary is good on the map. Uh, <laughs> don't give don't give Nomia those meta picks. Yeah, they're just very good with them. And it's also going to be the Oriole taken away, so not wanting to allow that. We have seen it, seen the Oriole really rise to be a first pick priority over the course of the day. So... No, we're not wanting to allow it go through, but it does give up the Dahaka over to Ethereal. Very strong on this map. Mm. Good AOE, so good objective. Um, basically, good good on the objective. Global, good lane, good soaking, uh, good clearing lanes. Just an all good character to have. But look at that, Nomi are going highly aggressive. Grey Mane into Utha. Again, these are both very good meta picks on this. Also, extremely good first picks as well. You know, obviously, Uther can keep the Grey Man alive when he dives in to do his damage. And if Grey Man can hang around and slide the back line, you know, he's a, it's like a pig in mud or a, uh, I don't know, a, 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 a dog in a puddle. I don't know. Um, a wolf among sheep. That's it. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. I was trying to go with the wolf because Grey Man, you know, the Hungry Morgan like thing. the wolf. Yeah, essentially, he's able to be so free. And I feel as though. Uh, looking at Infernal Shrines, usually, well, just looking in general at drafting, more quite often you will see Uther paired up with the Genji. Genji is very strong. We have seen mm. Nomi's uh, like likeness, or they have enjoyed playing the Genji. But mm. Greymane does tend to come up uh, more often on Infernal Shrines yeah. uh, due to his play around the the Shrine phase, and he ha tends to have much more. Uh, effective That's damage right. in those areas, but that does give over the diva, which is a bit of an interesting takeaway. Yeah, taking that off, uh, off old uh, Fat ninety four. I wonder how he feels about that. He's he's the diva, diva supreme lord. But uh, Malfurion obviously <laughs> picked up, and that's interesting because we've seen Malfurion. We've seen him in the last few games be less impactful. He still have his moments, but obviously last recent patches have made him less impactful. But yet they're still going with him. There is potential play around the shrines when they are spawned that the roots can really capture, can really trap in the enemy uh, enemy heroes. There might be some plays there, but look, they've got Tahaka, they've got Diva. They don't necessarily have a... Like, they have a good front line, but they don't have a traditional tank in their front line. Yeah, yeah, that's probably going to be... A, uh, yeah, that's going to be rather problematic once we get into these big team fights mm. because the Diva, she's, she's not a necessarily appealing tank not like something like say a Muradin or a Johanna or a Diablo who is going to be knocking people away from your mm. from your squishy backline she is wanting to be annoying as all hell wanting to just soak up a lot of damage a lot of time and a lot of resources all right and cool. she just wants to control space let's just say Gul'dan has just been removed GL do you think we're gonna oh Falstad ban that's interesting mm. I was looking at the lineup of Nomia and they could potentially still take a mage behind this like, you know, taking someone like KT, again, he's great on the objective, both for getting the objective and both for bursting down the enemy heroes. Um, do you think Do you think the false that the global pressure that Nomia has been able to put out on maps like this before, do you think that's a good ban coming out of Ethereal? Yeah, and we have seen them in the past be very adept at the false that play, not just uh, being good at the hero himself, but also playing around that global pressure and so taking that away is going to limit the amount of mm. uh, answering options for the Dahaka. But there's still quite a lot on the board. They could uh, even go into an incredibly heavy dive composition if they want to get onto a squishy backline, well, especially when, as you mentioned, the Diva and the Dahaka, they're not necessarily the most robust of 
um, front lines. Yeah, and they could take, and, and Nomia could grab a Varian behind here, and like really lock down a target. Um, there you yeah, go, seeing the Genji all, and the Tyrion. All in dive. They want to go in, and they want to go in hard with this composition. Ooh, who do you think they're gonna you're gonna finish up that lineup with? Obviously, Tyrion. I mean, Tyrion again. This could be a, a judgment or a sanctification. Sanctification is gonna keep people alive for much longer in the fights. But I mean, the, there's a bit of an interesting thing here with the Diva. They can all go in, but then Diva's defense matrix might actually get huge value if it can be placed right. It's a, it's not a it's not an easy ability to use. Yeah, it's it, it's going to be very interesting to see how these fights play out and how the defense from Ethereal is going to work out because mm. yeah, they have that self destruct to work with. Now they have their own kind of makeshift uh, Trinity or a uh, holy Trinity in the Valor Tassadar plus X support. The, the the holy two plus one plus one. Holy 2 plus a yeah. half. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much it. I mean, they're putting a lot of the, a lot of their bags in the Valor, ba in the Valor basket again. They're relying on her to bring out a lot of the damage mm. and just trying to have the Dahak and the Diva to stay alive as long as possible with the double support to allow this Valor to keep on going. Thrall. It's actually a bit of thrall. The new we thrall. Talking about this, yeah, we we're talking about at the start of the day. I believe Vanny was talking about how he's starting to come in uh we and uh, especially with uh, mouth Ale mm. not available to be played just yet he he does f uh fit into that solo laning quite well and also he can take it uh make the most of that all-in kind of engagement composition that they have quite well as well um if Tyrael goes in puts out a sanctification you have a genji you have a gray main you have a thrall all diving in it's going to be very, very risky for uh, Ethereum. It's going to be very hard for them to stay alive in some of these mm. fights. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, that's that's a... Like, because they don't have that traditional front line and the changes with Thrall as well has just made them a uh, lot stronger. It's actually interesting. It's um because I was talking a little bit to uh, Fat94 about this um, over over Twitter. And you're saying, like, oh, look, he's you know, coming back from DreamHack. They're only going to have, like, one or two days to really play on the new patch in preparation for this tournament and the fact that with the change to Thrall that they have that they, they're they going to go and play Thrall you know, it's like obviously very they, confident yeah very, like they, they've done confident. a lot of work they've done a lot of thoughts behind it and gone you know what yeah Thrall the changes that he's recently received are worthy enough to take him into a, into the event mm, well they do have it is a best of three so they do have an extra game in hand and maybe they just want to try some things make sure that they are uh, got to be working out in, uh, in this competitive environment. But we are into game one. We are here on Infernal Shrines. On the blue side, it is Nomia. We have Fat94 on the Thrall. Vanilla on the Uther. John is on Greyman. Robotoba is on the Tyrael. And Arcana is on the Genji. And making a encore for the third time today. It is Ethereal. We've got Aluminum playing on Malfurion uh, well, that's Sorelli. Sorelli is playing on Diva. Pendant's Dahaka, Greatness is Tazda, and Touch Me is Valor. And that Valor, oh, Touch Me is going to have to, going to have to do a lot of work. Robert Dova throwing out the taunt there. <laughs> they Aww. are very, they are a very confident bunch of players. As yeah, uh, they do get a nice lockdown. That is really nice. Vanilla is actually going to fall early on this thing, but behind that, there's going to be a death on Malfurion. It's a one for one trade very early on the game, but look, Siri, oh, Diva, Baby Diva, run! Bandy sold me, it's now Baby Diva, but <laughs> she runs, she escapes out of there, but look at that, you know, even though Diva on a death doesn't give full experience, the fact is that Nomia won that trade, they got a higher amount of experience, but behind that, look how fast Ethereal rotated to their lane to get the experience. Yeah, we're already into the lanes. We see a massive dive going in. <laughs> so, like, just out of nowhere, you have like three people just instantly appear right next to you and just get absolutely demolished. So, a nice little pick up them for them there. And this is pretty much going to be one of the things that we're going to be paying attention to throughout this game is will Ethereal be able to handle such high aggression uh, from this Nomia lineup? Yeah, like the three-man rotation from mid to bottom there is just doing great for the experience. And in the top lane, it's Fat94 and Arcana putting a lot of pressure. 
Uh, almost a takedown, however. It will be a takedown. Touch me's in a lot of trouble. Arcana wants to get the kill, but he can't connect. Pedro actually holds him down. And it's going to be another kill off to um, uh, Ethereal side so early on in the game. Uh, both teams, two for two, uh, Trey. That is a desperation kill there trying to get him to touch me, but actually doesn't pay off at the end of the day for Nomia. But again, it's early in the game. I know I'm just getting excited for Ethereal because they've been doing so well all day today. Yeah, but as John is taken quite low. We'll be able to get out of there. But yeah, it is still early days. We have quite a while before this composition from Nomia really starts to kick into overdrive. When we get to level 10, that's when we start to see those heroics pop in. And then we start to see them oh, look really at this uh, awesome turn up the, in the bottom there. John and Arcana on Tassadar and Lunum right now. Uh, Pentart's come down, so he's just going to act a little bit of um, control for him now. All the boys are in, the fight's broken out, but Greatness is already on a lot of damage! He does manage to get out, he's fine for the moment, but the Haka Penta could be in a lot of trouble here. John, Vanilla, Robodobo, all going in onto him. They, can they finish him off? Can they get the damage? Greatness almost taken out by the Gilnean Cocktail! But he does, he does manage to survive, but if Diva, Diva also keeps, keeps her mech as well. She does have the bomb activated. That's an important feature here. She needs to stay alive so she could actually use that onto this point. Great amount of control on the side of um, Ethereal right now. And it looks like they thought about diving in, but they just wanted to really push him back. Thrall's been captured in the top. Fat94 is taking a lot of damage, but he backs out in time. There's no no good follow-up because of positioning from um, Ethereal. And early days yet, but Arcane is now coming through the bottom. Throwing out those little ninja stars, getting a lot of damage. They want look at they're in like this this half semi engaged situation. They've got Fat94 working the objective, but John and Arcana are looking for that kill on the back line. They want Valor. They know she's there. They know she's on low health, but they can't quite commit. Putting their damage onto greatness now. Again, backs out. Objective still in the favor of Ethereal right now. But Nomir is slowly pushing him off the point. Health pulls are low. Sorelli can drop the bomb if she wants to, but she's not quite in position for anyone to really follow up yet. Arcana almost destroys the mech, but doesn't quite get the hit. Ooh, it's just a bit of back and forth. It, now with the members of Nomi Sun fall down, as we do get the Greymane falling. Oh, look at that beautiful bomb. Right look at that Fat 94 could be a little bit of trouble here. Almost oh. got clipped by the bomb, but Penda can probably get a uh, grab on here. No, he's obviously used it a little bit earlier and doesn't connect. What was on cooldown, Arcana wants to go in and get some work done. Yeah, it looks like this is going to go over to Ethereal. Mm. It looked like Nomia was starting to get an advantage throughout that period of play. Really starting to push back members of, uh, of the squishy backline of Ethereal back towards their, their side of the map. But with Sterling and uh, it was Penta on the two tanks just controlling the objective space, mm. they were able to get enough done. And also with the Dahaka going back and burrowing back in at full health, managed to get that fight going managed to get that nice kill and also secure the objective. They did only manage to get those two front towers, which is usually all you can really expect out of the first uh, Punisher, but it's a nice start coming out from Ethereal, but they're going to have to keep on playing a rather cautious game because, as I mentioned, once we hit level 10, the aggression can really ramp up for Nomia. Yeah, the game completely changes. They get access, you know, to all their heroics. Massive amounts of damage, lockdown, survivability, it all comes into play. And the first immortal is a really weak immortal anyway, GL, so... You know what, hey, hey Ethereal, you can have, we're not gonna overcommit. There's a couple of times where Arcana on Genji just missed out on a kill, and those would have been really nice pickups early, early in this game, but... It... They weren't, they, you know, it didn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's too early to really have any tremendous victory over either side yet. Ooh, almost. Oh, but Val, look at how touch is in a lot of trouble. Luckily, a shield comes out from Dazzler, but it's not enough. John goes in, gets the kill. Defense Matrix just a little bit too slow. Follow up now. Kana's taking a lot of damage here from Greatness, but the team can rotate down. Oh, no, it gets away with the uh, shift. Very nicely played. But, yeah, they've lost Valor in that. They've got no damage. they just got to get back to their lanes and start soaking. Because this is where Nomi is going to start trying to take a huge advantage by having the, uh, the, night, the better soak, the better experience gain game. Yeah, and as we, that's pretty much what we wanted to see from Nomi, they're just going all in on that one target. Even managed to get enough burst through the, the shields from the Tassadar, the heals from the Malfurion, just, mm. it just wasn't enough for the amount of all-in potential from the Nomi lineup. So, a nice little pick-off there, and this should give them a nice position coming into this next Immortal phase. Well, not, you said Immortal, but it's a Punisher phase. <laughs> it's the next Shrine phase.
That's it's going to be a phase. Who is going to get punished by this? The second Punisher, it does offer a lot more value if it's picked up. Nomi have positioned themselves in a better beginning situation. They're currently just sort of like oh, pushing Ethereal out. Is there a fight breaking out on the top? Pender's in a little bit of trouble. Akana comes in, Ooh. but the Borrow's enough to keep him alive. No, he's going back in. He's got the protection on. Rubber Dober oh. jumps in now. Oh my god. Oh, and they just missed out. That could have been a little bit of a dangerous play. The bomb comes out nicely placed. Arcana should be able to escape from it, but Vanilla was chipped by that. So he's taking a lot of damage now. He will want to back out or he could get lost in this fight. The objective is up, so neither side wants to lose this. But each side is literally on the verge of 10. Both have picked up their 10 now. This objective is about to get very messy. Oh, this could very well get explosive. Uh, it was advantageous for the Tahaka to be able to get back in time, but... But look at this, oh, he's getting punished in. now! And he's getting a lot of damage, Penny is finally taken out of The Judgment comes on, uh. it does connect with Lumen. Lumen's taking a lot of damage, a big Twilight Dream comes out, but it's not going to be enough! There's too much follow-up, Genji's on the map! He's going to help start cleaning up all the boys and girls! And, uh, Shirelli, you can, you can, you can just go now. John said, you can, you can leave! The, the objective point is ours! Wow! That, uh, Tahaka playing just a little bit too... Too aggressively, and you could see the minute he the minute he got vaporized, the front line for uh, Ethereal just doesn't doesn't really ex it's not a it's not a solid front line. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Well, yeah, and that's what we we're kind of questioning coming or well, as we made it through the draft is that yeah you do pick up the diva as a nice pick away mm. from Nomia. You don't necessarily want to allow them to control the space around those objectives, but because they have opted into that. Diva, while also having that Dahaka, mm. you don't necessarily have that uh, enough of a frontline to be able to protect that squishy backline, and that's pretty much what we saw there. Even though the Twilight Dream did end up allowing uh, the rest of Ethereal to clean up the Genji, it was a little bit too late. The damage was already yeah. done, and that is just going to be that second Punisher going over to Nomia. We'll have to see just how Ooh. much they, they can push this in. But in the top lane, Dahaka actually managed to um, kill the Thrall. That'll be a bit nicer now. Fat94 can't be getting that extra um, experience or stop the Harker from doing that. He's had the return, however. But Punisher, look at that really damaging Diva here, just really pushing them back. Push back uh, Ethereal means Nomia can get more damage on all the structures, clear the fort, clear the well, and oh, the Harker. Oh, he's going in. He, this is the relive moment. Oh. Night Twilight Dream, but the judgment comes out from Roadoba. Connects to Penna. The shield keeps him up for a little bit, but it's not enough. Diva's on a low health, decides to go in, but she packs out almost immediately after the fall of Dahaka. That is a massive, massive opportunity right now for uh, for Nomia. They got the they the, they they cut off the structures and they got a kill. And Fat 94 is back in the top lane, so he can experience. They've rotated down to the bottom lane right now. They might be able to pull a um you know, really weaken. This, uh, the front line, the front line down in the bottom lane. One thing I would do want to say is that with that fight, the perfect timing on that Divine Shield completely negated that Twilight Dream from Aluminum. So very nice timing there from Vanilla, allowing the Genji to really wreak havoc mm. in that fight. But yes, as you mentioned, they have cleaned up a lot of the, the structures in that mid lane. And, uh, Really in a good position to keep on uh, pushing the advantage with this very aggressive composition. Yes, they are kind of uh, ult de or heroic dependent when they want to go with that incredibly like all-in dive play, but they can still be a little bit aggressive with it, what they have uh, right now. They're being, you know, you, you could say they're ult dependent, but they're doing a great job rotating, oh. capturing those heroes out. The Harker in the top lane right now getting punished. A wasted judgment there from um, Robodoba actually. I don't think he really needed to do that, but I guess he just <laughs> made you a bit excited. Let's secure it. Um, it's 70 seconds, so we'll be back relatively fast. It's not an overly long cooldown, but it's you know, obviously not one of the shortest. But, you know, killing Dahaka is great. They've cleared the top lane. They are... It, this is... I, I say this all the time about Nomia. They are all about small advantages. And look at their lead. Touch me, Valor, in a lot of trouble. Look, you would not even have thought that that was a playmaking situation, but Nomia know better. They know that they can just get out that Valor when the moment uh, when the moment strikes. Arcana, not even worried. He can just slash oh. out of that greatness. Oh no, his pathing has betrayed him. It betrayed him, GL. That that was a little bit unfortunate. Thought he was going to be uh, safe enough to get into the range of the self destruct to try and just make his way back into yep. the base. But ended up running into two members who were still slashing away. 
ends up oh. falling, which ends up making it a two for nothing uh, exchange for Nomi. And this is pretty much just going to be another free uh, punisher going over to Nomi. Look, I, I like the play here from Akira, right? They're not overly panicking. They're not like, oh, quick, we got to get to the objective. They've grabbed the mercenaries in the top lane and they've left Dahaka there. It's giving them a bit of counterplay. If they can draw out this fight, hold Nomia back, they're going to be able to catch up a oh, little bit in experience. But look at this. Sarah Lee is going in. A little bit of damage on the road, but I'm not concerned for its life. Arcana really punishing Touch Me, wasting Rain of Vengeance there. That's not going to be good. Defense Matrix on John now, but again, John really wasn't in a position to do too much damage. He's dived on oh, the Valor now. Flank. Twilight! Oh, the Twilight is massive! It gets oh. Greymane diving just a little bit too deep, but the Judgment comes on. It jumped on the Valor. Is Valor going to fall? Yes, they will, but they've had to trade Fat94 for it. And Tyrael as well. This is a good situation now for Ethereal. Can they follow up? They're desperately trying to get a kill on uh, Arcana if they can. Oh, here we but go. Genji is just too tricky, but the Divine Shield has come out now. But it's not enough. Oh, no, it's going to be heaps, actually. I begged my pa and I looked at the wrong hero. Health bars overlapped. And Arcana hanging on for dear life, but he wants to go in. He, he, you know, he, he feels he can do it. Oh, deflect the come oh. And he can! Too oh, oh Genji! Genji is too OP in the hands of Nomia. That, oh, that's just that's just rude. It was so close to being an okay trade for uh, Ethereal. They, it was a bit of a, a missed engage there uh, from the flanking uh, Fat94 on the Thorp that I guess I'll call it a uh, zoning sundering, which missed everyone, but they ended up getting the kills in the end, so I guess it works out. But still, it was a reasonable fight going for Ethereal, but that Genji and those resets towards the end were just a little bit too much to deal with. And It, it just shows you yeah. why, you know, you see Genji get banned a lot of times. It's He just put out so much damage, his mobility is so great. He can literally dive in, dive out. You know, someone's like, I'm on low health, that's alright, I'm not going to be around long enough for you to retaliate. And now we're getting into this next shrine phase, and it looks like... Oh, Ooh, lovely wonderful. Sunder! That's a lovely four-man Sunder. Big oh. plays. Heroes are falling left, right, and center. The bomb comes out from a diva, but, you know, it's really just to add to the fireworks because there's three men down for Ethereal. Nomia just explosives. Like, they, the trigger, they, they, they flicked on the switch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it was necessary for Ethereal to work their way into the point there. But they kind of got baited into it and just got yep. absolutely wrecked by a Sundering. That w the last one, the previous one, kind of whiffed, but that one was absolutely on point and it set it up just beautiful. a massive follow-up. Oh god, it, separ it just it separated our Tassadar, so we couldn't quite get to him. Everyone else was stunned, and then it was just like, oh, I guess, like, how, how many AoEs can we uh, overlap? So now they're on the core here, level 19 versus 16. Definitely a Nomia's favor now. I'd be very surprised if they fall here, but we're going to see Ethereal give it their best for the members of the time to fall now. Without Valor, it's a hard defense, and game one is going in the favor of Nomia. Yeah, incredibly well done. Ethereal were doing a pretty decent job in staying in there for, for a bit, for like the first half mm. up until 10, but as we mentioned, like in the draft, once they started just piling on the pressure, they just really yeah. were not able to protect that back line. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the moment. Like, you could see when Nomia hit 10, the heroics were just their big playmakers. And, well, you know, oh, they had to have, you know, oh, did Nomia have to have all their heroics to be effective? No. But yeah, even geez, one of them. It didn't and matter. And to be effective. Just yeah. one of them just goes in and just, everyone just follows up on it. It was mm. essentially, like, yes, they had that very big wombo combo kind of all-in potential, but the communication to be able to just like mm. say hey i'm going in follow me in and let's just go for it incredibly well done by nomi there yeah, and that clutch thunder like that that thunder from fat 94 that was i it was just it was just massive it, it was game ending because it literally was they did that like oh yeah we can get this we can do that we can get so many options now um <laughs> vandy and skimmy Wow, what an exciting start as Ethereal <laughs> fighting Nomia, but they couldn't quite yeah. couldn't quite make it at the end. It seems to be their favorite style, right? They love to play this um, Dahaka as well as Diva mm. together. They love to play this almost like defensive style of like, come to us, 
fight on our conditions mm. and uh, it seemed to actually really work out in their favor especially as you're saying till level 10 and that's when yeah. i like sweet we got our ultimates time to really go uh, hammer about it mm. i mean genji was just going insane like that last fight we got the double dash it was oh. just dirty like it's just yeah. like wow like, <laughs> don't do that ding, hey. ding 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, at the very end as well, at the core, just, like, Divine should, as he dashes in, yeah. and just hack and slash your way to victory. Mm. So, uh, very aggressive team comp. Mm. They got the throw, which I'm loving. They're playing on a new patch, so straight away, yeah. Ben's just like, sweet, let's just bust this one out. But, um, yeah, promising stuff by Ethereal to start things off with. Yeah, Ethereal really managed to hold on. It was really that 10 being acquired by Nomia, and then you could almost see, like, the switch for Go was turned on, because it was an explosive start, and Genji getting so much value out of the Dragon Blade. That's why we say Genji mm. Uther. Just don't want to let yeah, that yeah, through. It's disgusting. And his best friend, Greymane, as well, Go for the Throat being picked up, so it was full aggression coming out from Nomia, and they were getting the kills. It didn't matter if you had stall tactics. They just had so much damage coming your way that they could call out a target, and that target would be dead, essentially. Mm. Oh, pretty much that, that 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 four the the Genji the Uther the Greymane and the Cheriel those four were like if you, if you could get those four in a draft uh, through uh, throughout the midseason brawl you're you're bloody cheering you could do pretty much whatever with your last mm. pick and be able to do a serviceable job and it turns yeah. out on the new patch the last oh, pick is strong take away the Valor, there's actually no damage on their comp. Mm. So it seemed to be get rid of Violet. There's no way for it to stay alive. There's only a regrowth, which okay, who cares? Mm. Judgment or the engage potential in the world between Genji and Greymane, and it's just yeah. There's no way for Violet to live through all that. No, and we saw that several times. Yeah, I think it's, it's a it little is, bit too much to deal with. And, and it's and it's a great decision making and like uh, or strategy also on the part of Nomia where they've they've got the trigger and they take judgment. Yeah, so many, so many games, sanctification, like sanctification is just going, you have to beat the sanctifications out, and everyone lives while they've countered all that damage. But yet the judgment going, well, look, they've only got Valor. If we can either yeah. punish her out and then <laughs> judgment onto a target and then everyone else follows, or you guys can follow and then I can lock them down as they're trying to escape. It's like, you know, it's, it's that going, look, it's the big flashy move of sanctification, but judgment is going to score us that kill against that key DPS. Yeah, and one thing that, like, on the new patch, Malfurion doesn't have cleanse, which is one of the big things mm. in dissuading a judgment. There's no Oriel to Crystal Aegis, the Valor, which would yep. usually be a good deterrent for the judgment. Yeah. Those two things out of the way, it's just, okay, we'll just like go in, just completely demolish this Valor, and then what are you going to do? Mm. Just very well done for them. Nothing. Is the uh, yeah, exactly. answer there, GL? The answer is nothing. We'll call that the uh, we'll call it the prison break comp. You know, you get in, get the get the cash, get out. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Bust out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So straight in away, Ethereal's removed uh, a new wreck from the go. Oriel's been banned out again. It's oh, we, no me. Are they gonna sneaky sneaky do this? Try and do the same composition. Well, they, yeah. they if the they drivers can. Go in, they effectively could, but I'll have to see if Ethereal are going to just switch things up, maybe take away one of those key pieces, maybe take away the Uther. Uh, mm. But then again, it would be leaving up the Dahaka or, and still the Genji. There's still quite a few other pieces on the board. It's going to be, uh, it's a tough spot for Ethereal to be in because they know that Nomia is like, if you take away one of those key pieces like it doesn't matter they've got another they've got another piece in the back pocket yeah you go to the side like you know it's, it's, just as well, yeah. what 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 is more detrimental to your lineup mm, yeah, no. and that's their trouble we you talk know about yeah. to stop to stop an uther gray main or genji they've got to they've got to pick it they have to select it themselves right now they could still just go with the dahak if they are really oh actually Going with the mm. Zeratul, wanting to really try and control the map, and even those later game yep. uh, team fights with that Void Prism, but that is going to leave even more on the table. Yeah. The... For Nomia. <laughs> Jeez, this is. Genji and Uther, that, that, that's my trouble there. Zeratul, and so early on in the um, pick as well. Like, I don't think Zeratul is one of those things that, you know, getting to round, round three of uh, drafting, yeah. you go, oh man. I hope, I hope Zeratul's still on the board. Yeah, I'm hoping that they... I'm hoping they have some 
clear plan in mind for this. They're not going to go crazy old school and pick up Jaina. The Zeratul Jaina <laughs> Diablo kind of thing. Just go full on wombo combo. Alright, so we got hmm. Zarin for shields. I guess you could also do the shields of um, Zeratul, but I mean, you'd be looking at. Oh, does Zarya shields on someone like um, Jaina? And she acts as your bruiser as well, Zarya. So there's yeah. that play there, but I mean, that is that is pretty off meta. That's oh, actually, they're still interior. Yeah, that's a that's a good pick away. Mm -hmm. I mean, can work well with um, the aggression that they want. To, well, Zeratul wants to be Zarya shields, sniping people from the interior shields. Yeah, they have got shields for days. One thing I'm worried about though is that yeah, like the the amount that you've given up for taking away that Zeratul, you've given away two of like the strongest, if not these two of the strongest, like meta picks right now. The game the Uther, they have pretty much controlled the meta and how it's been going for like the past month. And they could they've almost given those up, yeah. they've given up both of those to snag a first pick Zeratul. I'm not in I'm not entirely entirely sold on it just yet. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how the rest of the draft goes, but uh, I'm I'm really hoping that they have a real clear idea in mind. Yeah, really like a really solid pocket pocket strategy here they're just gonna rip out like this is the only time it works on Tower of Doom. It only works when the time is, you know, 2 p.m. WA time. Pocket strat <laughs> Tower of Doom. But I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm, I should mention, like, I'm not hating the Zero tool, but against a target like Uther as well, like Uther is a pretty hard cookie to have crack into. And now we're moving yeah. a Chromie Band. I guess Chromie does have a lot of power on this map on Tower of Doom. She, uh, you know, the part again, pathways are pretty predictable. Uh, people handing in uh, Abbas are being picked up. Mm. Abbas is from I was, I was actually wondering whether or not Ethereal were thinking of an Abbas pick up to try and do that, but they've actually got Morales and Hammer. Protect the Hammer. But on the other side, like Nomia, they they could they pretty much control the map unless like the Zeratul can really chase down this Abbas and clean him up like over and over, but. I guess Nomi, like I feel Nomi Diego needs a um, better tank, something that really affect it to affect Sergeant Hammer. Stitches is going to play that game. Hmm. Wow, this is it, this is a little bit of an odd draft here. Nomi, actually, no, this, it's not a, so much of an odd draft, I should say. For Nomi, it's like completely fine. It's like it it, it yeah. all works. We've seen it work consistently over the course of the past month. But and you can put the pieces the together. Yeah, I'm just a little bit confused. Uh, we'll have to see how it plays out, though. They, uh, <laughs> uh, it's going to be a real interesting one, I guess. Yeah, I'm, 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 I am. Wow, you know, out of, I so we talked earlier, Gia. We said that to beat Nomia, you have to outdraft them. To be honest, I don't think this they've is, outdrafted them this here. Is, this is this is not what I meant when I said that. <laughs> but uh, what can they do? I mean, they, so they, yeah, what can they? What, look, we've got to see. This could be it. This could be the thorn. This could be the slingshot that takes down Goliath. <laughs> uh, it's a, a bit out of left field, but I guess they're gonna have to try something to really. Uh, throw a spanner in the works, but here we are. We are on Towns of Doom. It is game two, and on the blue side, one up, one zero up in this series. It is Nomia. We have Fat94 on the Dahaka, Vanilla on Utha, John on the Abatha, Arcana as Deli Zeva on the Genji, and Robodoba is on the Stitches. And reprising their role as Ethereal, it is. Ethereal. We have Sorelli on Ethereal. Ethereal, Ethereal. Um, Illuminum is playing Morales. Penta is on the Zarya. Greatness is playing on Sergeant Hammer. And then Touch Me will be Zeratul. Greatness is exactly what we'll need to see out of Hammer this game to really take it away. So we have a little bit of an early slap and tickle here. A nice big hook comes out from Stitches, grabs Penta. But uh, Vanilla is in a lot of trouble. It does manage to back away. Behind this, Fat94 gets the peel onto, gets the grab onto Greatness, but a lot of damage is being put out right now. It does pick up the Dahaka kill, so it's starting good for Ethereal, but <laughs> it started pretty good last game as well. 
Yeah, a bit of an interesting decision to try and burrow in there from Fat94. Um, he's going to give up that first kill and some of the early pressure is... Looks like Arcana really wants to get aggressive onto this <laughs> Lieutenant Arras, but the shield's just a little bit too much right now. Yeah, and it looked like he... Oh, gets taken out! Being a little bit too aggressive there on um, Lunum. Again, it's still... So, I, I guess it's just seeing Nomia get picked off in the Anzen region is such a rare sight that um, you almost want to not, not celebrate, but you almost want to, you know, pat the uh, other team on the back, like, you know, good job. But it started well last time. Greatness is in a very, very particular the position just then. Robert Dover going, I wish I had my hook. I wish I had my hook. But with Luton yeah, there, you're really going to be able to heal him up. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see if they can actually get to a point where they have enough follow-up on the hook. I mean, sure, you can hook someone in, but if you've got nothing to follow up on it, it's like, hey, you're just giving your opponent a uh, position to just start wailing away at you. So we have to see how this uh, first ultra phase ends up coming as Touch Me takes a lot of damage and actually falls <laughs> to the combined efforts of Fat94, Arcana, and the Abathur Hat. So a nice little pickup for them and will allow them to control a lot of the uh, a lot of the map pressure coming into this first shrine phase. Yeah, I feel this is going to be a bit of a trouble here now. Luminum is actually taking a lot of damage. Arcane is going for a re rerun. He's like, you know what? I don't want to watch the same episode. This is the episode oh. where I get the kill and nobody kills me. But I think this is where we're going to see a real big trouble in Ethereal's play, GL. I don't know what you think of this. How are they going to be able to control multiple, um, multiple altars? Yeah, that is going to be a bit of a problem as we do see a bit of engagement on the top side. Fat 94 with the help of the Abathur is just doing a little bit too much for them to deal with. Yeah, Tyrael is going down, but down on the bottom oh. line, Stitches goes in. Greatness is in a lot of trouble. He is getting away. There's no shield from Penta. It's already been used. Penta's managed to shoot himself, however, so he will stay alive. He sees Arcana, but the heal from Vanilla is going to keep him up. So the Penta Arcana dream has to be squashed for now. But Dahaka was finally taken out in the top lane uh, after all that as well. Touch Me has run into Robodora, it does have to blink out. Gets hooked back in though! Oh, and Arcana does sneak in there with the little kill at the end. Yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's an incredibly mobile composition that we have uh, from, from Nomia. They can be around the map at like, no time at all. You have the Dahaka who can burrow into the other side of the map and influence fights. Arcana and the Genji, he's just dashing all over the place and able to be such a menace. And yeah, although the uh, the Abathur isn't directly involved, he is going to be helping out all over the map as well, applying pressure everywhere. And already we're starting to see these little avenues to where Nomia are really let it, uh, allowing their composition to come yeah. into its own. And there's just not really uh, enough on the side of Ethereal for them to actually repel that. Yeah, every time when they group up for a fight, I just don't really see it going in the uh, in the in their favor at any stage. But maybe that's not what really they're going for. I mean, like, well, we're going to win out with the lane for it. That's something you don't traditionally do on um, on Towers of Doom. You know, that the sieging is important, but it's not. Oh, Arcane has gone in, looted him. Got a nice big fat old hook from the uh, stitches, but he did manage to back away to continue line up. Arcana falls again to touch me, but greatness is in a lot of trouble. Does actually manage to back out. The shields and healing from uh from Zarya and Luminum are actually doing a great job of um, keeping their teammates up, but greatness hooked again, but can back out as there was no follow-up stun from our Uta. Yeah, and that's pretty much what we need to be seeing from uh, Ethereal. They need to pretty much act as this kind of death ball. Uh, with the Zaya, the Hammer, and the Barrage, there's a nice hook going out hooked in. A lot of damage going out. Lunin's doing a great job of keeping him alive. Penta does manage to get out now. If there was one extra DPS, he would have been dead. We we'll see the both altars spawning now, so it's actually quite good for Ethereal that he didn't die. But it's not. It's still on the table. Fat94 is in, and Zarya does zig and zag, but Arcana will get the kill, and they kill Hammer. Two big kills right before an altar. This is this is time. This could go both ways now. Um, Sorelli is desperately trying to grab the older before someone oh. comes in. Arcana oh. is in though, so they're not going to be able to stop it. We see Touch Me trying to do the same effect onto Fat 94. No older's picked up yet, but oh. the hook, the stitches hook gets Sorelli. The shield just keeping up, but Arcana will soon fix that. 
Wow. On zero two <laughs> flying falls. This is all over the place. There's fighting happening absolutely everywhere. And as I mentioned with how mobile and how like just how much all their damage can be spread out. Nobody is just able to take so many of these fights, whereas mm. Ethereal, a lot of their strength is in that hammer. And yep. It's just not working out for them so far. They managed to get a, a reasonable push on the bottom side, but beyond those two towers, they just haven't really got much out of the pick. Yeah, it's... it's it, I, it hasn't performed. Hammer just hasn't performed, GL. That's the... That's the word right now. Um, the, I guess they're just keeping up inexperience. So level 10 advantage to is not going to be that much by themselves. Touch Me does scout out. Oh, early aggression, but Uther was oh. right there. I know he can blink away, but Arcana oh. can follow up with a swift strike, but, you know, follows up into uh, Touch Me and the boys. So we will back out from that, but... Look at this, Rodo is oh, coming down. They're trying up. to get the block onto the Sergeant Hammer. A hook can come out, but Touch Me is back into the fray. Hasn't revealed himself yet onto Arcana. But no follow-up, they're just sort of like countering this play now. Yeah, there wasn't enough there to uh, really threaten the members of Ethereal. They do have level 10, mm. but they don't necessarily have the... It, it's a bit of a numbers disadvantage that's just not really working out for them. They don't necessarily have the front line uh, to really lock down the members of Ethereal, and they are just going to be backing away from that. And it is given enough time for them to actually pick up level 10 of their own, so they do have the Steam Drone on uh, for Morales, so that will be looking to really amplify the amount of damage coming out of that hammer. Mm. Yeah, that is... I mean, it's going it's to amplify oh. damage. Is it going to be enough? The Steam Drone has gone out. The Void Prison come out. It's in kind of a nice position, but look at that greatness. It's just getting hammered down now. Morales is keeping him alive, but we just don't see the damage coming out yet. But it's starting to flow in both directions. It's still in the favor of Nomia getting two kills. So Reserily is trying to run away, Pen is on low health, Robodo is by himself, but you know what, he feels a little bit confident because he's got Arcana and Fat94 are going to arrive. That's Zarya gone, and I, I think I think we just sealed it there. It's It was a bit of a bad, in, well, not a bad engagement, a great engagement of Nomia, but a bad situation for um, Ethereal, because they weren't quite set up. But even then, I... The time is now. You know, I feel like the, the BP just delayed the inevitable, to be honest. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm <laughs> the, trying to think, like, the value behind it. Um, well, they had the the hammer trying to set that up with the Stim Drone, like, sieging mm. up and Stim Drone away to try to wail away at the members of Nomi when they got out, but rub it over with the Stitches, managing to hook in the the hammer before she could really uh, set up and start wailing away. It just allowed them uh, to just pick that fight apart, and there's not mm. enough damage uh, consistent uh, reliable damage coming out from Ethereal, and even though they did end up, uh, even though Nomi did lose the Uther, he was still able to be useful throughout that entire time, and when you exchange one Uther for four members on your, opposers, yeah. on your opponent's side, I'm pretty sure you'll take that trade any day of the week. Alright, look at that. Arcana is descending upon the bottom lane right now. Lunum could be in a little bit of trouble. He has to be careful here. Actually, Shadow Clone's been used, I should say. Just the clone's been used. Onto, so that's double Genji action going on right now. The fight has broken out. Sanctification oh, nice. has been popped, keeping members alive. A lot of damage going out. It's in the favor of Nomi at the moment, but John is about to fall. He is a clone, so it doesn't really matter. Fat94 is in the back line there, just punishing uh, Sorelli. The oh, Void Rune has fallen. Perfect. So good. Greatness got hooked. He's gone. The damage has fallen. Oh Zara has fallen. Sorelli, you better run because you could be next to fall. <laughs> Alright, so really does survive, get over the wall. Touch me, however, is being chased by Arcana now on the Genji, and Genji scores his prey, gets his kill, and Nomi approve again in the team fight that they are just so uh just so dominating. And to lose Hammer so early in in those fights, it's just really it's starting to really hurt Ethereal now. Yeah, a lot of that fight was just them trying to just scramble for a defense. Mm. The hook onto that hammer brought him underneath the the bell tower really just forced Ethereal into a very defen defensive position. It was a great uh, sanctification which allowed them to try and set up the play, but as you mentioned, with the ultimate evolution, we had two Genjis just dipping in and out and doing so much damage, and Fat94 on the Tahaka with the flank, absorbing so much damage and getting pretty much a, a 0 to 100 adaptation really... Uh, really just turning that fight on his head. 
and this is allowing Nomia to just completely dictate all pressure on the map. And they picked up that just before the uh, mid lane mid lane structure fell, so Nomia managed to get a uh, massive six shots behind all that. They picked up the bottom structure. There's Tyrion on the top lane working on that one, but look at this. It looks like they're going in for another fight here. They know Tyrion is nowhere to be seen. Ooh, wow! What happened to his health? Genji happened to his health. That's what happened to Morales. Uh, Robdo is going back in again. He's got should have a hook ready. An odd direction for Greatness to run oh in, but he had God. no choice. This is disgusting. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. Oh, fully time hooked there by Robdo, but oh my God, this is just rude. <laughs> we we saw it in the previous game. Divine Shield, uh, Dragon Blade is just way way too strong. We. We saw why it was banned consistently throughout mm. the mid-season brawl. They're making a strong case for being consistently banned here today. And... Yeah. <sighs> wow, that is just... That's just disgusting. That's probably the only word I could really use for that. It's a breakaway ga game now for Nomia. 17-14, Towers of Doom. There's only 10 hit points left on the side of uh, Ethereal. And look, they're gonna get... Look, they can get the boss. They can get top lane. And I think just from the attrition of the, the boss in top lane, if they're not if they're not winning, they're going to be a, a mercenary camp away. They are so close to finishing this game off, as you mentioned. If they take the top one, if they can hold on to the six, oh, um, really... they will be able to finish off with a single uh, altar. But they don't necessarily need to overextend themselves yeah. just for sake. But we do have the triple altar spawn, which is oh, going to be wow. incredibly hard for Ethereal to actually deal with. We see them try and make a play by pushing heavily on the bottom side of the map, trying to pick up a bell tower for themselves, but Nomi are here to engage. Ow, oh, that's a nasty thing. is going to keep them alive for a little bit longer, but is it going to be enough? I don't know, because even they just no damage on this side. Too much healing coming out from Uther, and look at that. They start to fall left, right, and center. Morale. It's going to be a five man wipe. Tyrion could not escape. <laughs> it doesn't matter if he could escape or not. Ouch. Ow, they all lined up. Did you see that swift strike from Genji? Did you see it? And he got final cut as well, obviously. Which one? Swift. He had like 10 of them. Oh, they all <laughs> lined so up. so many swift strikes that it's hard to bloody tell. I mean, oh, you have resetting Genji left, right, and center. You have an ultimate evolution Genji who is also swift striking yep. all the way through those fights. And that is going to be it. They grab those extra bell towers. It's not even necessary as they have the entire map to themselves with three altars on the map. There that is go. gonna be game. Nomia lock in their spot at the ANZ finals. That's it. It's tied in. It's it's now official. Nomia have placed in HCC season three. Couldn't couldn't get into the Game Star Weekly League because of their commitment to DreamHack season two HGC. But they came back today. And they've managed to do all their games 2-0 again, showing a dominating force. Now, I just had some an update. It's um, there's actually due to one of the uh, players.